everyone, and welcome to the Data Science Festival. We are excited to bring you the, uh, the ninth Festival DSF uh, May Day. I'm Arzak, I will be the MSC, uh, the MC for this room. Uh, thank you all for coming and help us, helping us to create such a thriving community. We ask that you switch your phones on silent. A schedule of talks and sessions is in your booklets, uh, which you can find in your swag bags. If you have any questions, please find a data festival team member who will be wearing a staff t-shirt. There's also free water at the back of the room, so feel free to help yourself. The DSF is a celebration of all things data. We aim to connect uh, the tech community and foster the sharing of knowledge, inspiration and ideas. Just a reminder that all talks will be recorded and uploaded to the DSF website and YouTube channel. If a room is full, like this one today, uh, please make your way to another room and you can watch back uh, any talks you missed. This event is free to attend and built by the community. Without the help of our sponsors, we couldn't make this event the success it is. Uh, it's. Thank you to Data Idols, BSI, Unidays, Future Coders, Superlinked, IIR, IS, Informa, SDG Group, Digitas, Dunham B, NVIDIA, Snowflake, Create Communities, and finally Codenode, who have provided us with such a great venue. Thank you again for attending the DSF May Day, and we hope you have a great day. Please check out the back of your booklets for a portion of popcorn, courtesy of Data Idols, and have a wander around our circus, entertainment, and uh, caricaturist area. The free popcorn in the back of your DSF May book uh, will be uh, located in the DSF festival zone and will be available from 12 to 5. And there is a slight competition about the, uh, with the popcorn, so if you just can snap a selfie with your popcorn, then post it on LinkedIn uh, with a tag of MQ, uh, MQ -Ube, so MQ, and Data Science Festival, you can use the hashtag DSF May Day. And now it's uh, heading over to our uh, great speaker today. We're opening the session with uh, the speech, ti the talk title, um, Machine Learning Operations in Financial Services, presented by Michelle Conway, which, uh, which is a lead data scientist for Lloyd's Banking Group. Uh, she is a highly experienced professional with a strong passion for leveraging machine learning uh, to drive insights and inform strategic decision making. Michelle's work involves deploying models into production, enabling the business to make data-driven decisions. She is also dedicated to building communities for women in data and tech space, successfully creating a data science women's community for Python-based projects. Originally from Ireland, she is an avid fan of London City, enjoying its rich, rich culture and amazing artwork. So can we please just cheer her and give her a clap? Thank you. Hi everyone, how are you doing? Um, I feel like I don't need to do an introduction now after that one, but I'm Michelle Conway, it's to be here. I'm a lead data scientist for Lloyd's Banking Group. I work an amazing data science team that does ML Ops, and I'm here to talk to you about financial forecasting in the financial sector. Um, I do have a lot of content for 15 minutes and I'm being a little bit ambitious, but I think I'm gonna get through it. So I'm gonna to talk to you about financial forecasting, the importance of it, why we need it in financial services, because it's people's money, customers' money, banking's money, and we can't get the books wrong. Um, I'm gonna to talk to you about ARIMA modeling, which is what we use, the techniques in data science to do that forecasting. I'm gonna show you two or three Python libraries that do that really well, and then also give you production tips and tricks. I'm very passionate about deploying models into production because personally I think a data science model adds no value unless it's gone live and the business is using it to drive decisions. So I'm a huge fan of productionizing everything. I will share a GitHub repo with you which has no Jupyter notebooks. It's only Python files, scripts, and like how you'll get stuff live and deploying stuff using MKDocs. So first off, um, when you work in financial services, we are heavily regulated by the FCA and rightly so because we need to manage the risks of making sure our books balance and everything is done to precision and preciseness. And we do, a lot of, we do have a lot of governance that we need to pass, so getting everything right is hugely important. And we use machine learning operations hugely. So by machine learning operations, I mean it's machine learning using DevOps techniques, so development operations, where you would continuously develop and continuously deploy. So you'd make releases consistently to your models. You don't just leave them sitting there, they're not locally on a notebook, they're deployed into production. Um, so this is what I'm going to be talking about you today. And how we do that, a really good 
technique for doing forecasting is ARIMA modeling. So you may have heard of this before. I'm just going to give a high-level overview of the concepts. Um, so ARIMA is autoregressive integrated moving averages. And what I mean by when we go to apply this technique, you have to think of a time series. So that could be something that's happening every minute, every hour, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. And you want to analyze how that series is performing so you can predict values into the future. And when we do that, Aruma Modeling likes to look at the series itself against itself so it can produce correlations and that helps derive what the autoaggressive term is, which is like one component of the modeling. And when it also comes to modeling these time series, you need to make sure your series is stationary. And one way of doing that is differencing. So taking the values against each other and seeing how much you want to do that to make it more stable. So you can see there I have a plot of it's a yearly stationary um, time series plot, but if that was going up and down, left, right and center, it's not, it's gonna to create too much noise for your model to actually read something consistently and find trends, seasonality and patterns, which is really important in time series. Now, I, there is a wealth of books and depth on time series. This one slide, please, does not cover it. I just wanted to give you a flavor of some concepts that are part of it. And then we also have moving averages, which you might have seen on the news. Remember rolling seven-day rolling averages that we have on the COVID um, statistics and metrics. So that's called MA in time series. It's moving averages. And to help actually highlight what these values are for your modeling, um, some really good plots such as the ACF and PACF are highly important to do that. So the ACF is your autocorrelation function, which looks at your series correlated against each other, but looking at the K lag. And then the partial autocorrelation function, again, is doing that, but it has a conditional probability where you take values out to see how it performs. Now, again, there's Matt's books written on all of these that are about this thick, so this slide does not cover everything comprehensively. Again, I want to do high-level concepts for you. So to do all that, there's three specific Python libraries that are pretty good at doing that. So Stats Models has been around. It's a really good statistical library, and it does ARIMA modeling really well, and it'll help you go through your values and figure it out. I do have a GitHub repo that I put together. It's like very high-level templated, but it kind of gives you good nuts and bolts for when you do productionize a model, good things to have in it, as well as I've kind of given dummy code that I took for each of the documentation in these three libraries. And I took a Kegel data set. So it was a time series forecasting one. I'll show it to you now. Yes, I think I have time. Um, and then SkyTime, it sits on top of scikit-learn. It's quite, um, it's really special the way it does things because it uses the same syntax and it's quite nice because it's, it's a really good framework that sits on top of it. And then Darts is the data analytical regression testing suite. I actually found Darts the best for doing time series really quick especially if you have proof of concept and you want to see how to do it. The feature engineering it does really quickly has like a nice little um, time series class, which I really enjoyed. So let's see if I can show you stuff. So the QR code that I had up on the screen will take you to this GitHub page. I've written the code base in a modular fashion, so all my code is in source. I highly recommend when you do code base that you write unit tests. I know people think that's a developer thing, but it's not. Um, unit testing is hugely important because when it comes to deploying models into production, there's normally a thing where you need a 90% unit test coverage. And if you've built your model in a notebook, that thing's not going live if you've no tests written. Um, I used a Python TOML file. I have in there, I'll show you in the PyCharm in a second. Obviously, you can use VS Code. I just personally like PyCharm. You can use different package versions. So in there, I've mentioned what they are. I'm also a big fan of linting, and I've used rough in this repo. Um, it's, a re it's like Black and Fleck 8, but it's faster and it takes into account those configurations. It's, an, it's a new tool on the block and it's quite nice. Um, as well as, I'm not sure if you're familiar with MKDocs, but I've used MKDocs for this repo. I have no Jupyter Notebooks. Notebooks are great when you want to display the output of your code, but I have run scripts and I have, this is MKDocs, how you deploy it. It's, um, it's got bits and pieces in it for how you do it. It's quite simple and easy to use. So in here, I've given instructions of how I deployed. I've used virtual environments. I haven't pipped installed packages on top of my local Python. Highly recommend it so you can pick versions and people see what ones you're using. Um, stats models, this is outputs that I got when I was running plots using the script code that's in the repo, and then with darts. So I've used markdown files to store my outputs, which is like really, really cool and easy to use. Um, yes, you can use notebooks, but in production, they're very, very hard to deploy and not the most fun. 
So in here, you find the README with like links to all of the websites that has the main documentation and where these models sits on PyPy. I wasn't going to reinvent the wheel and pretend it was my code. So these were the three libraries I mentioned, and then this is the Kaggle data set I use. Oh, you can't see it at all. This is cash. <laughs> How is this not? Could you not see any website? No. Ah, oh, lads, you should have told me sooner. I was going through some really good stuff there. <laughs> oh, it was in blink. It b uh, ah? Uh, I was going through amazing bits. Um, <laughs> yes, okay. This is the repo, so the QR code I had up. This is the repo it goes through, everything in the unit base. Your source code folder, your test, docs is where you deploy, leave your uh, markdown files. I was showing you this lovely website that no one could see, and I was kind of talking to myself. Mm -hmm. uh, NK Docs is brilliant for developer documentation and also to keep it with your local README. Um, read about it, I won't go into it, but it, it's quite good. I was mentioning I use virtual environments. This is just what I use personally for this particular project. And I created like two markdown files and just the outputs that I got when I was using stats models and darts. Darts was my favorite. Uh, the data was very, very messy. I've not done a lot of, I've done no feature engineering on it because I did not have time. But it's definitely a fun puzzle for you to solve. This was the data set that I used on Kaggle. It's publicly available. I wanted something that was like time series specific and you can use in finance or that's used in finance to help go with my financial services team. Um, I was talking about that I used a Pi Project Tomal. Um, my presentation slides are in here as well, so you're, you get everything in one go. Um, this is my YAML for MK Docs. I've used pre-commit hooks um, by using a pre-commit config YAML, and I use that based on rough. And then I was in the repo, being like, in the readme of the GitHub page, there's links to the actual developer documentation of the libraries, so please use that. These were the package versions that I used. I mentioned that I used Rough. These are all the configs that I used to make Rough similar to how Black and Fleck 8 perform, which is quite good. And then this was just a very basic high level of how I applied darts to that data set. And I mentioned about this really cool time series um, class that darts use. It, it just takes the time series and does all the feature engineering that you need to do to make it like compatible to actually go then and like fit in a Rima model. I quite liked it because it was really swift and nifty. Great for proof of concepts, but it's probably more of a nightmare in production because testing what you've done is going to be harder when it's wrapped up in a big class. So that was quite cool. And then, sweet, I think I covered everything there. I won't go into the packages. You can find them yourselves, the PyPy. Um, pi. And then if I go back into my lovely presentation. Okay, cool, amazing. Happy again. Okay, cover that, cover that. Yeah, production tips and tricks. So, once you've done your model, you've built it in your packages, and it sounds really good, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. So I showed you a code base that was in a modular fashion, and I highly recommended doing unit tests with test-driven design. Hugely important, spoke to you about rough. There's two other things that are quite cool and useful to use. Now, you will find print statements in my repo. Do not recommend that for production, but I do recommend logging, and there's a new one on the scene, which is Liguru. It's similar to the traditional Python, basic logging, but it's easier to use and it's more higher levels. So you write less code and you get stuff done quicker and it's quite fun and nifty. I'd recommend taking a look at it. And also, if you're familiar with running pipelines with parse args, you know, you have to specify what you want to be. Fire does it really well and really quickly. So it'll use the parameter of the function to specify and you can use type hinting to say what specific thing you want it to be. Um, so highly recommend that. How am I doing for time? Oh, yes, two minutes. I've nailed this. Um, I'm finished. So if anyone wants to connect with me on LinkedIn, that's my QR code to get to my page. Feel very, very free. I will post this content on LinkedIn at some point, but you have the QR code to the GitHub, so you kind of have everything in one go. Uh, hope you enjoyed. I won't have time for questions because it was a very whistle top store tech talk, and the next presenter is coming up very, very shortly. Um, but thank you for listening. Hope you found it helpful and enjoy deploying models into production.